I'm always excited to partner with uh, Wellness Office, and I think this is a great series that you all um, have started and happy to contribute my part of it today. For those of you who may not be familiar, Ohio State University Extension, we are part of the statewide campus of Ohio State University, and our mission is to bring research-based information to the communities, and we have a presence in every county. So you work for the university, perhaps you don't live in Franklin County or one of our um, uh, satellite uh, campuses, regional campuses, but please look up the Extension Office in your area. We have programming in the research bases of agriculture, youth development, community development, and my area, which is family and consumer sciences. And we uh, learned last month from Patrice Powers Barker. Uh, she talked about relationships and how we can relate mindfully to others. We're gonna build on her work and today add to the idea that we also, it's important to connect uh, with our community. Today, we're gonna to look at different aspects of community engagement. We're gonna spend some time first talking about how it's really connected to our health. We may not uh, consider that, but social connection absolutely has an impact on our health. We'll spend some time talking about volunteering and how we get started with that, and then some more resources on connecting that I'm really excited to share with you. So just for starters, just for fun, I would love for you to put in the chat some ways that you get involved in your community. It just might spark some ideas for others. And I know we, uh, Josh started us off with uh, winter activities, so I appreciate people um, putting those ideas in. But yeah, feel free to go ahead and enter some ideas. Maybe you volunteer, maybe you um, enjoy the arts, maybe you sing in a choir, maybe you mentor someone. Um, lots of ways, Habitat for Humanity, so many different ways that we can, um, we can get involved. So feel free to continue to put those ideas in as we go forward. But just wanted to get you started thinking about different ways that one might get involved in the community. So we'll shift and talk about um, social connection. So we as humans are wired for social connection and it's essential to our long-term survival as much as food and water are. But today, unfortunately, loneliness is more widespread than other major health issues in the United States. And let's talk a little bit about um, social isolation versus loneliness. We'll mention both of those today, but just by way of definition, social isolation is objectively having few social relationships or social roles few group memberships, and maybe infrequent social interaction. But on the other hand, loneliness is subjective and it's more of an internal state. So it's um, when an individual distresses experience between what their perceived isolation is and this unmet need they have. Um, so it's a difference between their preferred experience and then what they actually experience. So that's when someone is, would define themselves as lonely. But it's far more than just a bad feeling. It harms uh, both the individual and societal health. Um, believe it or not, loneliness is associated with a greater risk of health problems like cardiovascular disease, dementia, stroke, depression, anxiety, premature death. Now, it may not be a causal relationship, but it's definitely uh, correlated with some of those health outcomes. So this one shocked me when I was reading this, but the mortality impact of being socially disconnected is similar to the mortality impact caused by smoking up to 15 cigarettes a day. That just blew me away. Um, the fact that being socially disconnected can have that much of a detrimental effect on our health. So that's for the individual, but the harmful consequences of a society that lacks social connection, that can be felt in everywhere, like our schools, our workplaces, different civic organizations. Um, and they can also, loneliness can have a si significant financial impact for employers. It shows up in terms of lost pro productivity, employees missing work um, from, from those employees that report that they feel more lonely. Just a little bit more on this, and then I promise we'll change our tone here, but um, trends in social connection. Loneliness affects people from all age groups and socioeconomic uh, conditions, all geographies. 
Currently, about half of the adults in the United States report experiencing loneliness. Um, and over the past few decades, we see trends where um, that show that companionship and engagement with family and friends have declined and social isolation has increased. And also that trust in others as well as in institutions, which is an indicator for social connectedness, is reported to be on historic decline for Americans. So when we look at what could be driving these downward trends, um, there's some research that points to uh, declining social participation. We're just not as social as we used to be. Certain demographics, um, less involvement in our communities, and the use of technology could be potential factors. Um, also, like in terms of demographics, more Americans are living alone today compared to like 1960. We have our family size and marriage rates declining. Um, community involvement's been on the decline since the 70s. And again, these aren't necessarily causal um, for isolation and loneliness, but they definitely have worked alongside to increase those. So um, we actually were calling this now an epidemic of loneliness and social isolation. And it's such a major public health concern that the Surgeon General launched a study that was published in 2023 and an advisory on that to show us how to build more connected lives and a more connected society. So we've looked at some of those profound consequences of loneliness and isolation, and we have not just an opportunity, but an obligation to make some of those same investments in addressing this social connection issue as compared to what we have made um, in addressing things like tobacco use, obesity, addiction crisis. So all of those things are important. And now um, we're turning our attention to this, um, working on combating the loneliness and isolation. So we know that they represent profound threats to our health and well-being, but we have the power to respond. So just by taking some small steps every day to strengthen relationships, like again, Patrice talked about last month, and supporting some community efforts to rebuild social connection, we can rise to meet this moment. So we can do this by building lives and communities that are healthier and happier, and even ensure our country and the world are better poised to take on some challenges that lie ahead. So let's look at some different aspects of this. Um, social connection um, can reduce the um, risk of premature mortality, it can predict better physical and mental health outcomes. It can ease our stress. It's pretty cool. So we know that it really impacts the health and well-being of individuals. Um, so we also have found that education and economic achievement are impacted by connection. So it really filters through all aspects of life. Author Brene Brown defines connection as the energy that exists between people when they feel seen, heard, and valued, and when they can give and receive without judgment, and when they derive sustenance and strength from the relationship. So a great definition to kind of set us off there, talking about social connection. Um, so again, we talked about how it impacts individuals, but it's also vital to our community's health and success. So communities that are socially connected, they have better um, health statistics at the population level, and here's what's really cool. They're also more prepared and resilient in the face of disaster situations. Um, they might also experience greater economic prosperity, less levels of crime and violence. So when we look at how we do this, um, our relationships and interactions with our family, friends, colleagues, our neighbors, those are just some of the things that create social connection. But our connection with others in our community and our neighborhoods, it's also formed by uh, digital environments, schools, workplaces. So our social connection and these quality of our relationships is really a contributor to what we're considering this overall um, vitality in our communities and this social connection. So looking at how this can impact health by fostering that social connection, it really requires that we commit to our relationships and our communities. What we do today can create some sustainable uh, changes and bring about some better health um, overall. And so really, I think um, 
when I initially titled this webinar, um, Investing in Your Community, as I got into it and thought a little bit more, I thought really what we are doing is investing ourselves in the community. And so one of the ways that we can foster this social connection is to volunteer. And let's look at some ways uh, that we can, we can do that and some of the benefits of volunteering. So uh, number 10, it's good for you. Volunteering provides physical and mental rewards. It can reduce stress. So studies show that when you focus on someone other than yourself, it interrupts the usual tension producing patterns that we have in our minds. It can make you healthier, things like moods and emotions, optimism, joy, control over your own fate, and it even can strengthen your immune system. Number nine, it saves resources. Uh, volunteering provides valuable community services so that more money could be spent on other local needs. I've seen the estimated value of a volunteer's time anywhere from 16 to $30 an hour, um, depending on which community. So thinking about how, you know, the, the time that you give really does invest in your community. Number eight, volunteers gain uh, some professional experience. You can test out a career, try out and gain certain skills, develop a network. Number seven, it brings people together. So as a volunteer, you could maybe help with uniting people from diverse backgrounds, working together toward a common goal. It can build camaraderie and teamwork. Really um, working together on any project is a great way to get to know others. It can also promote personal growth and self-esteem. Uh, if we understand a community needs better, that can help even foster empathy and self-efficacy in the individuals that volunteer toward those efforts. Number five, volunteering strengthens our community because we're supporting, could be supporting families, schools, youth, or even beautifying the community depending on the project. Um, number four, you can learn a lot. You could learn about yourself, uh, discovering some hidden talents you maybe you didn't know you had. Um, you could learn about your government if you're volunteering through local nonprofit um, agencies. You could be learning about the different functions and aspects. And then even learning about your community. We gain uh, knowledge of local resources and how we can use those resources to solve community needs. And you never know when that might come in handy for someone else that you're uh, encountering. And our top three reasons to volunteer you get a chance to give back. Um, when you support community resources that you um, use yourself, maybe it's something that you've benefited from, you have a chance to give back and benefit others. And number two, volunteering encourages civic responsibility. So uh, community service and volunteerism, they're again, that investment in our community and the people who live in it. And of course, my favorite is number one, you make a difference. Every person counts in what they do and the benefits, again, it's really a win-win. You feel uh, better for having helped and then, you know, benefiting all of those in your community that that uh, volunteer service touches. So how do we get started? Um, well, maybe one way is to ask yourself something specific about what you want to do. So for example, ask yourself, you know, do you want to make it better where you live? Um, do you want to meet people different from yourself? Try something new? Explore some interests and hobbies? So thinking about what you truly love can help you um, even establish your own purpose as well. But considering what type of skills, talents, and passions you bring to the table, and then how you could turn that into something meaningful to you and your community. So having answers to questions like these can help you really narrow down your search a bit. So how can we support social connection? Well, we can make connections at work, home, school, community, really by making that social connection a priority. And you're taking steps today, even just logging into this webinar and getting some more ideas on how to do that. You can educate others about the importance of social connection and well-being. And now you know all those health uh, impacts and you can share those with others. And then really creating a culture that fosters inclusion and well-being. And I'm excited to share some resources with you. And we will have these links available um, in the chat as well as in the uh, follow-up email that you'll receive. But did you know that there is an entire foundation dedicated to fostering random acts of kindness? 
It's called the Random Acts of Kindness Foundation. And it's a nonprofit whose mission is, is the idea of making kindness the norm. So research has shown that performing acts of kindness can have a positive impact on our mental health. So by performing these acts of kindness, we can reduce stress, anxiety, depression. And this foundation, um, they achieve this by inspiring and facilitating kindness ideas through free resources. And they focus on schools, workplaces, home, community. They have some things you can print off, um, some different cards you can and quotes you can use. You can even sign up for their, their kindness blog. So I'm sure you've heard the term random acts of kindness. It's a really fun um, thing to participate in. And here are some specific resources from a foundation just to help you get started. And just this week, our Ohio State University Extension organization had our annual conference, and our speaker was Alex Sheen, who is from Ohio, and he has been on uh, TED Talks. He's a motivational speaker, author, and he started this um, movement, really, is how it started, on social media, and now it's a nonprofit, but it's dedicated to bettering humanity through making promises and keeping them. So he uh, ca called this organization because I said I would. And he started by offering to have people um, print and, and write out cards, or you can fill them out online and they will send them free, um, but 10 promise cards. So you write out a promise and you can even specify who it might uh, get to you can send the address in and they will send those. So they have shipped over 13.1 million promise cards to um, 178 countries um, all over the globe. And of course, all of our 50 states here. So what started as a social media idea has really expanded and they do uh, so much more now. They're changing lives through character development programs and volunteer projects in partnership with schools, juvenile detention centers, prisons, communities. And I learned um, at Alex's uh, presentation on Tuesday that he just purchased a 92 acre camp or um, facility in Knox County. And it's the, because I said I would camp um, for youth. So exciting that someone else's idea in connecting and um, fostering that is, really making such an impact and, and we can be a part of that. The third resource I wanted to talk about was the Surgeon General. He's giving us some specific things that we can do to foster some social connection and he calls it the five for five connection challenge. And the idea is that it's this way to build and strengthen relationships and incorporate this connection into our daily lives. So the idea is that we take five actions and do those on five uh, consecutive days. So the first step is to pick these five actions, pick five days in a row uh, with people in your life. And they have some ideas there, um, surgeongeneral.gov slash challenge. We also have that link to share with you. The second is that you connect. Then each day, you'll take one simple action of your choice. And it's just one of these five that you've kind of set aside. And it could be expressing gratitude, offering support, or asking for help. But each one of those is a way of connecting with someone else. And you just do that one simple action once a day for five days. And then it's kind of neat at the end. The third step is to just reflect and share a little bit. How did connecting make you feel? And it doesn't necessarily even ask about the impact on the other person, but then you have a chance to share that um, and that's how things grow. So you invite three friends to uh, take the challenge. You can use social media there, Made to Connect, or even emailing the Surgeon General at made to connect um, at hhs.gov. They also have some printable things that you can do, some postcards um, to help you with your reflection part and some, even a toolkit that you can download and use in your community. And it, it could be fun, you never know, just to start uh, a movement like that in your own workplace. I know that we have um, Buckeye Wellness Innovators that try to inspire uh, health and wellness in the places where we work across the university. Well, each of you as university employees can be an ambassador for social connection equipped with these tools and resources. And I hope that you picked up even just one little tip that might be useful to you. Um, but just to kind of wrap up, we've 
talked about quite a few things here and we focus a lot on health and how important that social co connection is. What are the benefits of volunteering? How we can maybe get started? And then some specific uh, resources for connection. I always like to um, quote people smarter than me. Um, so motivational speaker and author, Sean Stevenson says that communication is merely an exchange of information, but connection is an exchange of our humanity. Thank you for joining me today. If you're interested in either the links to the slides or the, um, the links to those specific resources that we shared, you're welcome to scan that QR code. And again, like to thank you for, for joining us. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to put those in the chat.